So hello everyone, I'm Roland, and thank you so much for joining me today. And in today's live event, I will be talking about the Chinese language. And here is a short introduction of myself. I grew up in Taiwan, and my first language is Mandarin Chinese. And I also speak English, as you can see, and I also learned a little bit of French and German. And now I'm a Mandarin Chinese teacher at several several universities. And I studied teaching Chinese as a second language at National Taiwan Normal University in Taipei. And I also did my internship in Leipzig, Germany. That's basically how I learned German. So let's move on. And here's an uh, overview of today's session. So first I will be talking about um, the Chinese language, I'll be introducing the, the language. And I will also um, talk about some features of Taiwanese Mandarin, since I come from Taiwan. And I will also be sharing some learning tips and resources. And finally, there will be a QA session. So you can, if you have any questions, you can ask me at the end. Okay, so let us begin. So I think some of you might have been wondering, like what's the difference between Chinese and Mandarin, right? So Chinese is the umbrella term of a group of languages spoken in China. And Mandarin is the Chinese based on Beijing dialect. And sometimes we call it like standard Chinese. Yeah, it serves as lingua franca in China. And it is also the official language of China, Taiwan, and Singapore. Okay, so here I want to do a small quiz. So true or false, Taiwanese is the most widely spoken language in Taiwan. If you think it's true, you can type T in the chat. If you think it's false, you can type F in the chat. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to answer. Okay, time's up, let me see. So, false, false, false. Okay, so you already know the answer. Yes, so the answer is false. Mandarin Chinese, not Taiwanese. Mandarin Chinese is the most widely spoken language in Taiwan. Okay, but how about Taiwanese? What is Taiwanese? Okay, so these are, uh, as you can see on the slide, these are the languages spoken in Taiwan. So the most spoken language is Mandarin Chinese. And it serves as the official language and it is used in schools, media, and our daily communication. Now, how about Taiwanese? Taiwanese is the local language spoken in the southern part of Taiwan. And it is also spoken among the older generations. Yeah, and we sometimes we use um we use the term Taiwanese or Hokkien or Tai Yu or Minan Yu to refer to this language. Yeah, it's all referred to Taiwanese Hokkien. And there's also Hakka, which is spoken by the Hakka ethnic group. And Taiwan is also home to 16 indigenous languages. Unfortunately, less than 2% of the population speak the languages. Okay, so I guess now you've got some basic understanding of languages in Taiwan. And now let's move back to today's topic, Chinese. So as you know, Chinese is a tonal language which means that the pitch of your voice changes the meaning of a word. So in Chinese, there are four main tones and one neutral tone. And other famous tonal languages are like Vietnamese and Thai. So for like Vietnamese and Thai people, it's easier for them to learn Chinese or to learn the tones because um, it's easier for them to perceive the, the nuances or imitate the tones. But um, the tones are quite different in these languages. Okay, so let me demonstrate how the tones sound like. So we have first tone, ma, ma is a high and level pitch, like ma. Okay, and we also have second tone, ma, ma, ma is a rising tone, ma, and then ma, ma. Ma is a falling and rising tone. And fourth tone, ma. Ma. Ma is a falling tone. 
and then neutral tone is very short and sharp, like ma, ma, ma. Okay, so as I mentioned, tones affect meanings. So for example, ma, ma, if it's in first tone, it means mom. And ma, ma, it's nom. Ma, ma, it's horse. Ma, ma, it means to scold someone. And we have the neutral tone, ma, ma. It's a question particle. Can you hear the differences? Yeah. Okay, let's do a small, small quiz. So I'll read a random words from the slide. And if you think it's first tone, you type one. If you think it's second tone, you type two. And if you think it's like um the neutral tone, you type five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, ready? Okay. Mm. Question number one. Ma. 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 Okay, what do you think? Let me take a look. Ma. Oh, great. Yes, it's the third tone. Ma. Okay, let's try another one. Ma. 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 Yes, it's. Yeah, it's first tone. Great. Okay, the last one. Ma. 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 Okay, actually, this one is the neutral tone. It's number five. Let me show you what's the difference between these two. So for fourth tone, it's ma. Ma. It should be longer than the neutral tone. Ma. Okay, and the fifth one, the neutral tone is ma. 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 Can you hear the difference? Ma is fourth tone. Ma is fifth tone, the neutral tone. Yeah, okay. So now let's move on. Here, I would like to give you another example. So um, the, on the slide, there's, uh, there are two words. The first one is shui jiao. Shui jiao, this one, which means something. Shui jiao. Shui jiao. Shui jiao means to sleep, to sleep. So if I say, 我要水饺, 我要水饺, it means I want some dumplings. If I say, 我要睡觉, 我要睡觉, it means I want to sleep. Yeah, so tone matters in Chinese. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next part. So since Chinese characters are logograms, how do we rep represent Chinese sounds? How do we type? There are two different kinds of systems. So in China, Singapore, Malaysia, they use this ping in system. And it looks like this. It looks like, like alphabet. Yeah, we use alphabet. However, in Taiwan, there's another system called zhu in. Zhu in. And it looks like this. Zhu in. So let me show you how it works. So for ping in, when you type, it looks like this. And in Taiwan, we type in zhu yin, and it looks like this. Yeah, so it's quite different, quite different. Okay, so let's move on to characters. So as you can see on the slide, there are three different forms of characters. We have traditional characters, which is used in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau. And we also have simplified characters used in China, Singapore and Malaysia. And in Japanese, there's also characters called kanji characters and it looks different. It all looks different. So I've got a lot of questions asking, like, um, do Taiwanese people or do Chinese people understand Japanese? Can you read Japanese since you all have characters? So the answer is like yes and no. Because some characters do have similar meanings and even similar pronunciation but not all of them are the same. So we might be able to guess some of it, but sometimes we might get it wrong. And also there's like similar characters with totally different meanings. So Chinese and Japanese, there are like two different languages. We still have to learn Japanese to understand it. Okay, and I know a lot of students want to know about this, like how many characters are there? 
So according to the largest dictionary, largest Chinese dictionary, there are 100,000 characters, 100,000. Now that's a lot. But the good news is um, you only need to know about 1,000 characters to like understand the general meanings of articles you will read in your life. Yeah, so you need to learn only like 1,000 characters. And for Taiwanese who has received like, higher education, they typically know around 6,000 Chinese characters. 6, 000, um, somewhere between 6,000 and 7,000. Okay, and as a Chinese teacher, here's a kind reminder. When you're learning the characters, you should learn to write them in correct stroke order. And why is that? First, it helps you memorize the characters. And also, knowing the basic stroke order rules help you learn new characters more quickly in the future. And also, your characters will look better and will be easier to read for people. Yeah, so if you want to like look, look for the stroke order of a word, you can scan the QR code. Yeah, there's a website and you can search for the word you want to learn. Okay, let's move on. So let's move on to the grammar. So in Chinese, there's no tenses, there's no verb conjugation. So it's like rather simple than, than English or like European languages. But there's aspect markers and particles. So what is that? So for example, we have this one called zhe, zhe. If you place a verb in front of it, it means a continuing action or a continuing state. For example, if I say 我坐着, 我坐着, it means I'm sitting, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the chair, I'm on the chair, 我坐着. And if I use this one, 了, 了, it indicates completed action. For example, if I say 我吃了, 我吃了, it means I've already eaten, 我吃了. So the action of eating is completed. And there's also this one, 过, 过, which indicates experience. So for example, 我去过日本, 我去过日本, it means I've been to Japan, I've been to Japan. So we just add some words into the sentence and it can change the aspect of the sentence. Okay, so there's no, there's no tenses, there's no conjugation in Chinese. So word order become very important in Chinese. So the basic word order in Chinese is also subject, verb, object. But if you change the word order, it might change the meaning completely. For example, the following two sentences um, consist of the same elements. 我, 坐计程车, 去机场. But if I change, I move it, I move the element, the meaning will become different. So for the, for the first sentence, 我, 坐计程车去机场, it means I take a taxi to the airport. If I change the order of this two verb phrase, 我去机场坐计程车, it becomes I go to the airport to take a taxi. So both of the sentences are grammatically correct, but the meanings are different. The meanings are quite different. So that, that is how it works in Chinese. And since I'm from Taiwan, I would like to spend some time introducing the features of Taiwanese Mandarin. So first, let's talk about the um, phonological differences. So in Taiwanese Mandarin, you won't hear the suffix er as much as in standard Chinese. And here, standard Chinese is the, the Beijing dialect. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so in standard Chinese, people will say, Wan, Huar, Jiao Hai, Wan, Huar, Jiao Hai. In Taiwanese Mandarin, we say Wan, Huar, Jiao Hai. Wan, Huar, Jiao Hai. Can you hear the difference? Yes? Okay, and another big difference is that in Taiwanese Mandarin, the retroflex sounds are often softened or even like disappeared. So in standard Chinese, the following four words sound like this. 知道, 知经, 
老师吃惊。And in Taiwanese Mandarin, it sounds like this: 知道吃惊，老师吃惊。So it's quite different, right? I'll show you again for the first one. So in standard Chinese, it's 知道知道。In Taiwanese Mandarin, 知道知道。Yeah, it's very different. Very, very different. And of course, there is vocabulary differences. I will just give you some examples. So, for example, internet in China is 网络网络 In Taiwan, is 网络网络 Video in China is 视频视频 In Taiwan, 影片影片 okay, and potato in China is 土豆土豆 In Taiwan, it's 马铃薯马铃薯 So it's quite different. Yeah, it's quite different. Okay, and there are also several grammatical differences. But today, I will just take you as an example. So if you learned Chinese before, you know you means to have. In Chinese, for example, 我有一本书 I have a book. 我有一本书 But in Taiwanese Mandarin, if you put 有 in front of a verb phrase, it will indicate the completion of an action or for like emphasis. Let me show you how it works. So in standard Chinese, you say 你吃饭了吗？你吃饭了吗 Means have you eaten yet? And in Taiwanese Mandarin, we say 你有吃饭了吗？你有吃饭了吗 ？Or 你有吃饭吗？你有吃饭吗 ？And this two convey the same meaning, exactly the same meaning. But in Taiwanese, in Taiwan, we prefer to say 你有吃饭吗？你有吃饭吗 ？And another example is 我去过日本。我去过日本。I've been to Japan. And in Taiwanese Mandarin, we say, 我有去过日本。我有去过日本。It means I've been to Japan. It's the same meaning. But we prefer to add 有 in front of the verb phrase. And I know this phenomenon also exists in South China. In, in some part of South China, they also use this kind of pattern. Like they use 有 to indicate that completed action. Okay, so、uh, I would like to know, like, how many have, of you have been to Taiwan? Anyone? Type yes if you've been to Taiwan. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, so if you've been to Taiwan, I believe you've heard this before. Like in Taiwan, people don't say 你好 so stop saying 你好 What do we say? We say 你吃饱了吗 or 你有吃饭了吗 as greeting. So we don't say 你好 stop saying 你好 to Taiwanese. Yeah, we say 你吃饱了吗？你吃饭了吗 ？Or 你有吃了吗 ？And to reply and to answer this question, you can reply with 吃了 or 还没 not yet. 吃了 or 还没 And why is that? So like before in the past, there were there were times when food wasn't like enough for people to eat like long long time ago. So this greeting was a way to check if someone had their basic needs met. And over time, it become a way to like express our like care and kindness to people. Yeah. So now we we say, oh, 你吃了吗？你有吃饭吗？你吃饱了吗 ？Instead of 你好 ，Yeah. Instead of 你好 Okay. And let's move on. And there's also a huge difference to it, like in Taiwanese Mandarin and in China. So in China, people say 谢谢 and you reply with 不客气，啊，谢谢。不客气 which means thank you, you're welcome. 谢谢不客气 But in Taiwan, people also say 不会不会 Yeah. So if a Taiwanese friend say 谢谢 you can reply with 不会 and it's the same meaning. You're welcome. 不会 you say 不会 And this usage is influenced by Taiwanese Hokkien. So in Taiwanese Hokkien, they say 没没 means that 不会 in in Mandarin Chinese. So we just translate the word into Mandarin Chinese. 不会 
Okay, so I've um, shared a lot about the language and Taiwanese Mandarin, and now I would like to share some learning tips and resources with you. So let's start with the learning tips. Okay, so when you first start to learn the Chinese language, start with useful vocabulary. And why is that? Because you will be able to communicate with native speakers pretty soon, and it will give you a sense of achievement. Yeah, so remember to start with useful vocabulary, okay? And also, you can learn new words in different contexts, in different contexts. Because from a cognitive perspective, it helps you uh, retrieve the words easily, and you can use it correctly in the future. So when you are learning a new word, you can like write down different sentences in different contexts and help you to learn better. Okay, and the next one is focus on tones from the very beginning. Remember to do that because tone affects meaning. As I mentioned before, right? Ma, 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 ma. They all have different meaning. Yeah, so focus on tones from day one. Okay, and another tip is to create a language learning routine. So it can be like watch a video, listening to podcasts learning a new word, anything that works for you. So you can create a routine for yourself. Okay, and also for like um, beginners, don't spend too much time writing characters. You can start by recognizing the characters first. Because to be honest, we native speaker, we don't really write characters every day. We type, right? So if you know how to type characters, you can recognize them, then you'll be able to communicate with people. Yeah, so when you first start to learn the language, don't spend too much time on writing. Yeah, start by like talking, talking to native speakers or listening to Chinese. Okay, another tip is to immerse yourself in the language as much as possible. So how to do that? You can immerse yourself by talking with native speakers or by doing a language exchange. Yeah, this all works. Another um, tip is sometimes you can take some classes with professional teachers because teachers usually can help you learn in a more structured way. Yeah, so you can like have some class with Chinese teachers. And here I would like to share some learning resources with you. And if you are interested, you can just scan the QR code and you can go to the website and take a look. So the first one is Chinese pod, Chinese pod. It's a YouTube channel with lots of graded podcasts, graded videos, and they also provide uh, free lessons. So if uh, free lessons for like all levels of learners, yeah, so you can take a look at their YouTube channel. And I also found a newly established um YouTube channel called Bite Size Chinese. I think they are also on Instagram. It's created by several Chinese speakers, um Taiwanese teachers. And they introduce a lot about Taiwanese culture and also some features of Taiwanese Mandarin. So if you are interested in Taiwanese Mandarin, you can take a look at their YouTube channel. And here's a website called Chen Chou Huang Wen Wang, Chen Chou Huang Wen Wang. And it provides lots of free textbooks and free workbooks, and also lots of teaching materials and learning materials. And all you need is the Google account to log in, and then you can have access to all this material. Yeah, so Chen Chou Hua Wen Wang. And uh, most of the, the textbook and workbooks are in traditional Chinese. Okay, and let's move on to a dictionary called Placo. So Placo is used by lots of Chinese language learners, and it supports both traditional Chinese traditional characters and simplified characters. And um, there's also like audio sounds for the sentences. So you can listen to the pronunciation and there's also flashcards. And you can also search a new word by writing. So if, don't, if you don't know how to pronounce the word, you can just write the characters and you can know like what that word is. Yeah, so I also recommend you to try the dictionary. And the last one I want to share is the, the chairman's bow. So it's a website, I think it's created by some teachers in China. 
and there is lots of graded articles, graded news, and also audio files to each article, and also many exercises. So if you want to like self-learn or self-taught the language, you can go to their website and take a look.